in this video, I'm going to share with you guys my insider secrets, tips, and tricks on how to get approved fast and easy, how to get approved for the most money, also how to know how much you can afford, as well as how you can close in 30 days or less, and even sometimes in two weeks. Hey honeybees, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, my name is Sierra and I do videos on beauty, finance, and lifestyle. I'm a full-time mortgage loan officer and I've helped hundreds of people to become homeowners and stop paying rent and start building wealth. So I share what I know and I've learned with you guys in hopes that it empowers you to become homeowners and or to build wealth. So if you're living under a rock and you missed out on my first video that I did on home buying, I will link it above and below. In that video, I talked about the main factors to getting approved. Unfortunately, at the end of that video, my microphone did go out. So I asked you guys and you said that you wanted me to do a part two to cover the footage that I lost in the last video. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys my insider secrets, tips, and tricks on how to get approved fast and easy, how to get approved for the most money, also how to know how much you can afford, as well as how you can close in 30 days or less and even sometimes in two weeks. I'm also going to address those pesky student loans as well as answer you all's questions that you asked me in the comment section of the last video. So this is going to be jam-packed with tons of information. If you were somebody who wants to buy a home in the year 2020 and you want to stop paying rent and start building wealth, you need to watch this video. In my last video, I went into great depth about bank accounts and banking and large deposits and things that can prevent you from getting approved when it comes to banking. One of those things I talked about was overdrafts. Overdrafts can keep you from getting approved or it can make the process a lot more rough. So I thought I would introduce you guys to something called Current. Who is the sponsor of this video? It's a mobile banking account, but it has no overdraft fees, no minimum balance and no hidden fees which is perfect for those of you who are trying to buy a house and if you get the black premium card you can get your paycheck up to two days faster so you have earlier access to your money and also you get instant credits back for those holds that they put at the gas station like when you're pumping gas you instantly get that back when you have the premium card and I like that it's a true debit card. It's not like a sketchy prepaid card or anything with hidden fees. Another thing I like about it is you can create what's called savings pods, which I like to think of as like little mini sinking funds to help you uh, save in different categories. It also notifies you when you make a purchase, so it really helps you keep track of how much you're spending. Um, you can also use it with Google Pay and Apple Wallet. You can also connect it to your Cash App and your Venmo, and you can use it like a regular debit card and get cash back at stores like at the register just the same way you would your regular Visa debit card. So right now it's available in the US on both iOS and Android and it literally takes two minutes to sign up. So go sign up and they will ship out your debit card completely free. It promotes saving and it helps you with budgeting by being able to keep track of what you're spending and those notifications will also help you keep track of what you're spending when you're spending. So definitely check it out. I recommend it for any of you who are just wanting a simple, banking method, no overdraft fees, no minimum balance, no hidden fees, and that is huge. Um, I will leave the link below. Check it out. It takes two minutes to sign up, get your card, and thank me later. Let's get into the video. Okay, so we're going to talk about my tips to getting approved and getting approved fast. My first tip is to know what you can afford. You're not gonna go shopping for a car or to the mall to buy clothes and you don't know how much you can afford. The same goes with buying a house. Your first stop should be with the mortgage lender before you look on any Zillow or website or before you get any real estate agent, you need to know first how much you qualify for. And knowing what you can afford will also help you to determine your monthly budget in terms of your mortgage. Your full monthly mortgage payment is made up of your principal and interest, hazard insurance, which is also your homeowner's insurance, mortgage insurance, property taxes, if you have any flood insurance that is required, as well as if you have any HOA fees. All of that is figured into 
into your monthly mortgage payment. So if you know how much you wanna pay per month in your mortgage, that will also help you to gauge how much you should be buying in your house. My recommendation is to uh, figure out how much you can afford comfortably per month for a mortgage payment. Start there and see what properties you can buy that fit within that mortgage payment. Okay, let's talk about the secret to getting approved for the most possible. If you're taking notes, you will want to write this down. The key to how much you get approved for is in your monthly debt to income ratio, also known as a DTI. So when I say DTI, that means debt to income ratio. This is the ratio that your mortgage lender is going to use to determine how much house you can afford and to determine how much you get pre-approved for. In order to figure out what your DTI is, divide your monthly expenses that are on credit by your monthly income before taxes. That's also known as your DTI. And this is going to give you a percentage or a ratio. That's your monthly debt to income ratio. An ideal debt to income ratio is 41% or less. That doesn't mean you have to have a 41% DTI in order to get approved, but having a 41% DTI is going to give you the best rate options as well as the most loan product options. You could essentially get any loan type with a 41% DTI. Okay, so let's say your DTI is higher than 41. Let's say it's higher than 43. Let's say it's super, super high, or you have a good DTI, but you wanna get approved for the most possible, and you wanna get your DTI as low as possible. There are tricks to lowering your DTI. One way to do this is to increase your income or to reduce your monthly debt. So you can increase your income if you get a raise or let's say you have some other income you can count such as child support, social security, disability, any other income. You just wanna make sure you have as much income as possible that you can count. So if your DTI is too high right now, consider getting a raise or adding on um, more hours or or getting a second job so that you can increase that income and decrease your debt to income ratio. You can also decrease your DTI by reducing your debts. Do this by either say it's like a car payment, you can refinance it to get a lower monthly payment. Your monthly bills, your monthly payments are considered the most important. We go by monthly for every calculation with the DTI. So if you have a car note that is $600, maybe you can refinance that down to $300. You can also pay off debts at closing. So this is one secret that a lot of people don't know is that if you want to get approved for more, one thing your mortgage lender can do is to mark certain debts as they're going to be paid off at closing. That gives you say 30 days or however long it takes you to close to get the money to pay those off. And you just bring them to closing along with your money for down payment and closing costs. That helps you get approved for more as well. Another industry insider secret, I don't know if I'm supposed to be sharing all these with you guys, but look, I want you guys to be empowered and to know. One secret is that you can remove a payment like a a uh, trade line or a line of credit from your DTI if you have 10 payments or less left. So say it's a car or a personal loan or any kind of installment debt, if you have 10 payments or less, that can be completely taken out of your DTI calculation. Now there is a caveat, it has to be less than 5% of your monthly income, the monthly payment has to be. So if you have some installment loans and you say you have maybe 12 payments left, wait until you have 10 payments left to apply because you'll be able to remove that debt out of the debt to income calculation as long as it's not more than 5% of your monthly income. You can also add a co-borrower. The co-borrower has to qualify the same way you do in terms of credit and your income and your debts. If that person has a really low DTI, 
adding them to the loan can help reduce your overall DTI. So if you have someone that can be a co-borrower on the mortgage with you that has decent credit and has good income but not much debt, then that's also going to help you get qualified for more as well. A big key to this is student loans. Student loans are a big piece in a lot of people's DTI. And so learning how to tackle that student loan debt and just how to work around that calculation of how it put into your DTI is super important. So that leads me into my next topic, which is student loans. Now, student loans are a huge epidemic, especially among millennials and the coming generations as we see the overall national student debt just continue to rise. It's out of hand and they definitely need to do something to fix this, but that's a whole nother video. If you do want some tips and tricks and secrets on going to school completely free, undergrad, grad school, everything, then I do have a video on that, which I will link above and below. But for those of us who do have student loans and weren't fortunate enough to slide through getting those degrees without any loans, this poses a big problem for a lot of people when they're trying to get approved for a house, especially young professionals. I see a lot of nurses and lawyers and doctors and people who have great income but have tons of student loans and it negatively affects their ability to buy a home. So I'm gonna give you my tips on how to avoid letting your student loans hold you back from getting approved. Okay, now to fully understand how your student loans affect your approval, you need to first know what stage your student loans are in. There's usually two or three stages that your student loan could be in. That's deferment, whether that's in-school deferment, hardship deferment, you get a six month grace period after you graduate and that is considered a deferment. And there's forbearance. Forbearance is considered a type of deferment, I guess, but with this deferment, you don't make any payments, but you still accrue interest. And then the last one is repayment. Figure out first, if you are in deferment and forbearance or repayment status. Now, when it comes to repayment, there's different types of repayment plans. They pretty much fall under two categories. And one is your fully amortized standard student loan, which is just your standard payment and that payment that you make over the course of that loan pays off the entire amount of that loan. Then there's income driven repayment, which is what a lot of people do. It allows you to pay back your student loans at a pace that's more comfortable for you based on your income. Now this is where it gets tricky. The way your student loan is calculated into your DTI is dependent upon the kind of loan that you have or are applying for, as well as what kind of payment status or what stage your student loan is in. So any student loan that is in any type of deferment for pretty much every loan type automatically gets a 1% payment calculated into the DTI. That's right. So even if your student loans are in deferment, we still have to calculate a monthly payment into your DTI. And that is equal to 1% of the entire student loan balance. So let's say you owe $100,000 altogether. We have to calculate a $1,000 monthly payment into your DTI. And as you can guess, something like a thousand dollars a month monthly payment completely kills your DTI and can completely kill your dreams of home ownership. But don't get discouraged, I have a resolution for that. Let me also explain how student loans that are in repayment are calculated. This is where it gets even trickier. If you are in repayment, if it is a fully amortized standard payment, that is the payment amount that is used used in your DTI. If you have a income driven payment, if that is lower than the 1% that would be counted of the entire balance, then it can only be used 
on a conventional loan. So if you are in an income based driven repayment plan for your student loan, we still have to count 1% if you're going FHA, USDA, and VA. If you go conventional, then we can use the payment amount for your income driven repayment. So my advice to you is, if you have exorbitant student loans, and especially if they are in deferment or you have an income base driven repayment plan, you need to get a conventional loan. I'm gonna go into depth more on the different types of loans and what they require for approval, but know that if you have high student loans, conventional is more than likely gonna be the loan type you need to lean towards. There are some other tricks you can do for student loans. When you call your student loan servicer, tell them you wanna estimate for a fully amortized payment plan. It may be worth it in that case for you to get on a standard payment plan versus leaving them in deferment because you also have to think after you close you can also put them back into deferment or go back into an income driven payment plan. So, student loans get really tricky when you are trying to get approved for a home. So it's best that you have your mortgage lender to really look at your specific situation and kind of walk you through. Okay, let's discuss the different types of loans. There are essentially four types of loans that you can choose from. That's FHA, VA, USDA and all three of those are government loans and then you have your conventional loan which is more of your loan for the cream of the crop higher credit scores kind of loan. I will give you a brief overview of each so you can understand a little bit more about what they are who they're targeted to and what they require for approval. An FHA loan is probably the most typical kind of loan, especially for first time home buyers. Your down payment's always gonna be 3.5% of the purchase price. FHA loans are really great for first time home buyers because their DTI guidelines are pretty wide. So you can have a pretty high DTI when it comes to an FHA loan. This allows more people to buy homes, especially first time home buyers. Another great thing about FHA loans is that interest rates tend to be lower than other loan types. So that's also beneficial for first time home buyers because it helps you to keep your monthly payment down. The downside of an FHA is you have to have what's called monthly mortgage insurance or private mortgage insurance, and that is always 85.85% .85 of the loan amount. So that is a part of your monthly mortgage payment. And once I get to conventional loans, you'll understand why that is somewhat of a disadvantage having to pay that. So generally that's your FHA loan. For FHA, you generally want to be at about 620 and above, but FHA can go down to a 580 credit score. Now me, for my clients, I tend to not do loans around the 580 range unless it's just a really clean file. More likely than not, I try to get my 580s up to a 620 before we get them approved and put them into the loan process, just because they're going to get a better rate and the process is going to be much easier for them and quicker. The next loan type is a USDA loan. I briefly touched on this in my last video, but the USDA loan is administered by the government, by the USDA, which is also the people who regulate me. They offer this loan as a no money down loan to people that want to buy in rural, rural, I can never say, rural, 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 rural areas. <laughs> Lord. So it does limit you in the places that you can buy because it has to be in an RD, a rural development. The upside is, like I said, you don't have to pay anything down. Now for this loan, there are much more narrow DTI limits as well as you tend to have to have a higher credit score to get approved for this loan. So again, I would say 620 to 640 is around where you want to be in order to start getting approved for the USDA loan. Make a note that since the D 
DTI guidelines are more narrow. You have to have a lower DTI to get approved for this, which also means USDA approval amounts are usually gonna be a good bit less than what an FHA approval amount would be. So with that, you have to weigh out the benefits and just determine, is it worth it to go the USDA route to get no down payment, but be limited to where you can buy and with the amount you can buy, or is it better to go FHA and be able to buy more and you're not limited, but you have to put a down payment down. Another thing about USDA is there is income limits. This is targeted for middle-class families, uh, so you can't make too much. I think the income limit for Baton Rouge is like 80,000 or 80 something thousand. So if you make more than the income limit is for your county or parish, then you cannot get approved for this loan. So there are some pros and cons to weigh out when deciding if you're gonna go USDA or FHA. And you also have your VA loan, which is for my veterans. This is no money down. And typically you wanna be at around a 620 or more to qualify for this. You can qualify below a 620, but again, it's one of those situations where it gets pretty, pretty rough. So if you can try to be at at least a 620 or above when getting a VA loan. VA loans are awesome because there's no money down and also there's no uh, monthly mortgage insurance involved. You can also get exempt from certain fees like the funding fee if you have a disability or you just have special authorization. So there's a lot of benefits to the VA loan as well as those rates tend to mirror those of FHA USDA. And so they're generally pretty low rates. So VA definitely all the way, if you are a veteran, active or retired or disabled, definitely go the VA route. And last but not least is the conventional loan, which is, like I said, sort of your vanilla cream of the crop, better for higher credit scores loan. This, you have to have at least a 620, but you're more likely to get approved the higher your credit score is. This is most beneficial for borrowers that are around a 720 or above credit score. And the reason is because that monthly mortgage insurance that you had to pay on FHA and USDA, you don't have to pay on conventional after you've paid down 20% of your loan. So you don't have to worry about that portion of your mortgage at all after you've paid off 20% of your loan, which makes your monthly payment much lower than any other loan type. Additionally, for the 20% of the loan that you do have to pay mortgage insurance, it tends to be a lot less than other loan types. So in general, with this loan, at higher credit scores, you're gonna get a lower monthly payment because you're paying less a PMI, or private mortgage insurance is what it's called. Rates for conventional do tend to be about 1% higher than other loans, but it usually is beneficial because you are still having that lower payment, so it kind and balances out. Also with conventional, your down payment can range anywhere from three to 5%. So you look at a 3.5%, which is the minimum down payment for FHA. If you go conventional, you could possibly go 3% and that's a lower down payment. There are provisions for first time home buyers within the conventional loan range that are there, opportunities that are there. There's programs called Home Ready, Home Possible. You can do your own research about these or I can do another video. There's so much involved in buying a home and just the different loan types and everything. So I can't, <laughs> that's my work phone ringing right now on a, on a Sunday. See, it never ends. Okay, so if you are of a higher credit score range and you're a first time home buyer, then you can likely qualify for a home ready or home possible. So those are all the loan types and considering what your DTI is, that probably will determine what loan type you go with or how much you get approved for. So in order to get approved for the most possible, you need to minimize your monthly debt to income ratio, as well as choose a loan type that will allow you to achieve the goals that you have. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you my insider secrets, tips, and tricks to closing 
fast in less than a month and sometimes even as short as two weeks. So an insider tip that I have is to use a mortgage company versus a bank. A bank tends to take longer to close on average three months, whereas a mortgage company can get you closed in 30 days or less. The number one thing that's gonna help you close super fast after you started the process is making sure that you have all of your funds ready, available, and showing in your bank account. That means all of the money that you were required to bring to closing, including a down payment if you have one, any closing costs um, that you're responsible for, any debts you're paying off. Just make sure that you have all of your money ready, available, and able to show in your bank account from the beginning. This is gonna make the process so much quicker for you. Number two, if you're going to get an inspection done, which most people get an inspection done on the house before starting the loan process, just to make sure that everything in the house is up to par of where they want it. With getting your inspection, try to get your inspection as soon as possible. So the way that I operate my loans is that we order the appraisal after the inspection is done and the real estate agent and the borrower give us the go ahead. So the sooner you can order your appraisal, the sooner you can close because the appraisal is usually what takes the longest. So get your inspection done right away so that you can get your appraisal ordered and done right away. Number three, ask your lender if they can do what's called a full submit. This is where they pre-underwrite the file. Once your loan gets sent to the lender, uh, they will the underwriter will review everything in your file and they will issue an approval, um, but what's called a conditional approval. And there will be conditions or just little things that the underwriter will ask for. It may be documents, it may be explanations of things, but mostly it's like documentation that's needed. So if your lender can actually pre-underwrite, go through the file and pretty much kind of predict everything that the underwriter is gonna ask for and get that documentation from you ahead of time so that you can do a full submit and that is going to make the process super fast because a lot of the process is going back and forth from getting documents from you to the underwriter the underwriter reviewing them and then requesting other things or clearing them if you can eliminate as many conditions as possible up front by doing a full submit this is going to make your process a breeze and fourth and last but certainly not least one of the major keys to getting closed as soon as possible is getting documents to your lender the same day they ask for them. The sooner you get the documents back to the lender, the sooner those conditions can be cleared so that your loan can go to the closing table. Okay, let's talk about the secrets to saving money. Yes, there's ways to save money during this home buying process and I'm gonna share them with you. Uh, the first is to pay attention to the cost associated with your loan for the most part I went over this in the last video but you can choose your own title company you can choose your own homeowners insurance and any fees that you can choose yourself make sure that you are getting them as low as possible meaning you're comparing prices and premiums between different companies to get the lowest and or you're negotiating with that company to get a lower fee or a lower premium pay attention to detail when it comes to the fees that you're paying and make sure you're getting the best premium or the best rate or the best cost for each fee that you have to pay. You can actually save a lot of money by making sure that you're paying the lowest in the areas that you can control. If you don't know what those areas are, then go watch my last video. Okay, so another thing that can be done, um, at least if you're with a broker, I'm not sure if you can do this with a bank, but you can choose to go up in rate to get credit towards closing. Every increment you go up in rate, the lender will actually give you money towards closing. Usually changes in rate don't alter your monthly payment drastically unless you're going like a percent to two percent more. So that's another thing that you'll need to refer to your mortgage lender about because there are tricks of the trade and little insider industry secrets on how we can get you more money when it comes to closing costs. Something 
else that you can do when it comes to closing costs is you can get what's called seller's concessions. This is money that the sellers give you towards closing costs. So the seller can either cover all or some of your closing costs, depending on the loan type you have. There are certain stipulations on how much the seller can give you, but a good real estate agent should be able to negotiate a good amount of seller's concessions to where you either pay only a little bit of your closing costs or you don't have to pay any of your closing costs at all. So make sure to mention you need to get your max seller's concessions. Mention that to your real estate agent when you are searching for homes. And last but not least, you can actually get a gift when it comes to your down payment. Most loan types allow you to get your down payment gifted from a uh, relative or from a friend or uh, a close family member. And so there are ways that you have to document this. So make sure to run it by your lender before you move any money or get any gifts, but you can get your down payment gifted. So if you have wonderful parents or wonderful friends or someone who would like to gift you your down payment, then they can do so. If you guys have more questions, leave them down below. This is a topic I can break down into so many more videos. I could do a video on each of these topics that I talked about alone. So let me know what you guys want to see next. Definitely comment below. If you are in need of credit repair, a lot of you have reached out to me about credit repair. I do not do credit repair. I don't counsel people individually on credit repair. That's not my lane. I am devoted full time to doing loans and I just don't have uh, the time or the clearance to do credit repair. So I do have a designated credit repair specialist that I recommend to my friends and family and now to you guys. And um, she is excellent. She's licensed, bonded and insured. And this person I recommend because she's not just going to dispute things. She actually educates you and helps you to improve your credit. And she's doing it special you could actually get a free credit consultation as well as i think it's like two free months of credit repair or something i'll put the details below but she's doing a special for christmas i honestly feel like good credit is the best gift you could give yourself especially those of you who are wanting to buy the higher your credit the better off you are going to be when you're trying to buy a home so i will put that link below for those of you who are in need of professional credit repair give me a thumbs up if you like this video thumbs ups and comments they really do help me gauge what kind of content I'm going to do and what you guys like and respond to. So it really is important for you guys to give me feedback, to like the video if you like it, and to comment below. Also make sure you hit that bell button for notifications. As many of you know, YouTube does not just send videos out to all of your subscribers. It only shows videos um, that it thinks you'll want to watch. And so if you would like to know when I upload a new video, make sure you hit that bell button so you'll automatically be notified. Also make sure to subscribe so you can be a part of the Honeybee fam if you're not already. Also, don't forget to check out Current. It's that mobile banking app with no hidden fees, no overdrafts, no minimum balance. I'm so excited about it, can you tell? Um, but I have linked it below, definitely go check it out. It takes two minutes to sign up. They'll ship your card out to you for free and you can get banking. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. I love you to the bank and back and I will see you in my next video.